I'm gonna show you how to craft truly compelling offers that sell with John Lee Dumas. Trust me, you don't wanna miss this. We're getting started right now. Yo, what is up, Zachary Babcock here, former drug addict, spent over five years of my life in prison, turned underdog entrepreneur and the proven wrong prodigy with a top 200 iTunes podcast on iTunes. I said that twice. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, um, and you want the best tips on how to turbocharge your lead generation and customer acquisition, hit the subscribe button and tap the bell notifications. That way you don't miss anything. All right, with that out the way, we're about to get into some killer, uh, man, about to show you how to craft a truly compelling offer that your audience actually wants, needs, and is willing to buy. And we got my man, JLD, John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire podcast joining us today. So let's dive right into the interview. What are some ways that, you know, us underdog entrepreneurs that are currently at the five figure range looking to scale to six and seven figures how can we craft compelling offers that our ideal high paying customers want and are willing to buy i mean number one if you're at five figures right now like congratulations because it is so much more difficult to get from three or four figures to five figures than it is from getting from five figures to six figures and then from six figures to seven figures it's a lot easier because now it's just about amplifying those things that you're doing right. It's about turning up the heat in the areas that you're already obviously generating revenue in. So the biggest mistake that I think a lot of people make in the five figure, uh, just the overall five figure range is that, and don't take this the wrong way, but they value their time too much, meaning they're not willing to do the stuff that I think it takes to get to six figures, to get to seven figures and beyond. And that is one-on-one -on -one calls. That is actually getting on with the handful of clients that you have or the multiple clients that you have at a lower um, dollar amount product or service, getting on a call with them and then asking them these four questions. How do you first find out about me? Like, how do you first find out about me? Um, what do you like about the content that I produce, about the things that I do? What do you like? Uh, what, what don't you like? Like, just be honest with me. Like, what don't you like? And then the final question is always, what is your biggest struggle right now as my current client, as my current customer? What's your biggest struggle? Have 30, 40, 50 of those conversations. And yes, those one-on-one -on -one conversations aren't scalable, so to speak. But the content that you will get from those conversations will be infinitely scalable because you'll start seeing, number one, ways that people are finding out about you and your content and your offers, et cetera. And then you can really amplify those things that are working. You'll find things that people like about what you're doing. You can amplify those things. You'll find things that people don't like that you're doing. And you can start to maybe, you know, don't just let one person's piece of advice, you know, change what you're doing. But if it's a repetitive thing, then maybe shift some of those things, those bad habits that a lot of people are talking about out of your business, out of your model. And then, you know, now number four, you're starting you're start to see some themes of similar struggles that a lot of your people are having, and then you create the solution. And then when you can really create the solution, then you offer them that solution. And sometimes it's going to click. Sometimes it doesn't click, and then you just move on to another struggle, provide a solution there, and, and, and offer that you know, to your audience in general. And eventually, hopefully right away if you're lucky, if not, it might take a few times, you'll get something that just clicks, that just works. And then you go all in. Then you start producing content all around that, holding webinars all around that, driving Facebook ads all to that, and just going all in on that one thing. Because if there's one thing that I've seen successful entrepreneurs do after having interviewed over 2,000 now is they dominate one thing. And so many people that are, that are at the five-figure uh, range, they're trying a lot of different things, and they're doing a lot of little things here and there in a lot of different areas, trying to see what works, and I get it. That's fine. That's part of the process. But successful six- and seven-figure entrepreneurs are crushing one thing, period. And I've had so many stories of entrepreneurs who are crushing one thing, doing six, seven figures, and then they said, all right, now it's time to do this, this, and this. And they took their eye off the ball of that one thing, and they just crashed and burned. And they had to go back to that one thing or figure out a new one thing. So that's definitely a strategy for success. 
Yeah, man. I love that, man. I love how you broke it down doing that one thing and doing your marketing homework. How important is that? You know, what advice would you have? Because, you know, a lot of us, and I've been guilty of this, and I'm pretty sure there's many people listening in right now have been guilty of getting this great idea for this product or service, and they just go rush on out there and create it, and then they bring it to the marketplace, and it's a complete dud. And now they're, like, stuck on that romantic phase of not wanting to let go to their great idea that their ideal customers simply don't want want and want to buy what advice would you give for those people it happens so often you know you have a couple people tell you that this is a big struggle so then you close the door to your office you put your head down and you just work and you create this product and you invest your time your energy your money your bandwidth into this product or the service or this community and then you release it to the world and few people or no people care i've done it i'm speaking from experience it's it's, it's heartbreaking because you really spent so much time, energy, and effort on it when you really could have figured it out a lot quicker and better by just saying, listen, I've had a lot of people tell me that this is a big struggle that they have. I'm going to create a solution to this problem, to the struggle, to this obstacle. This is what the solution is going to be. Is this something you would pay for, Zachary? Oh, it is something you'd pay for? Cool. Well, listen, it's going to be 300 bucks when it comes out. But if you pay me $100 right now, in 45 days, when it's actually live, 30 days, two months, however long you think it's going to take you to sit down and really create this thing, um, you're going to get it for 100 bucks, where everybody else is going to pay 300 bucks for it. And then Zach's like hemming and hawing now, like, well, you know, I said I'd pay for it, but, uh, you know, I need 100 bucks. No, not, not right now. That's not a big enough problem that you're solving. Then you move on to something else until Zachary is willing to part with real hard earned cash for a significant percentage. That's 30 to 50% of what you're going to end up pricing your product or service at. Then you don't have a product that's going to serve a big enough need. You have to find, you know, and again, it's going to be your number, but for me, you know, I have to have at least 50 people that are willing to uh, invest real dollars. And, and, by, and by the way, for your first couple, maybe it should be five people or 10 people. That's, that's real. That's legit. And if you get to that point when you have five or 10 people paying you real money for a future product you haven't created yet, then you know you have something special. All right. Was that hard hitting? Do you have more clarity? Do you have a better outlook on how to craft a truly compelling offer? Were there any aha moments for you? If so, give this video a thumbs up right now. Let me know down in the comments below what it was that was a game changer for you. And if this video sucked, if there was no good content in here for you that, that you didn't learn anything, you just feel stuck still, uh, let me know in the comments below and give this video a thumbs down. I really do appreciate your honest and sincere feedback because that helps me as a YouTuber get better at making videos and making videos that you actually want to watch uh, with that being said if you're not already subscribed to this channel and you want the best tips on how to turbocharge your lead generation and customer acquisition hit the subscribe button right now and tap the bell notifications that way you don't miss none of these videos on this channel thank you for tuning in I will see you on the next video and in the meantime if you want to check out some more videos I'm gonna share with some with you right now we put them hours in to bring them dollars in uh -oh. It's that underdog empowerment We put them hours in To bring them dollars in My name is Zachary Bell And it's that underdog